guys want to work in closer? Well, good morning, everyone, um, and thank you for being here. We're here today to share some new steps in our work to combat hate crime in Massachusetts. Joining me on stage are Attorney General Andrea Campbell, Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, our Secretary of Public Safety and Security, Terrence Reedy, and Colonel Jack Mon of the Massachusetts State Police. We're also joined today by several legislators, including uh, Representatives Alice Peisch and Becca Rausch, uh, excuse me, Senator Becca Rausch and Representative Alice Peisch, uh, President of the Massachusetts District Attorneys Association, Anthony Galuni, and District Attorneys from across Massachusetts. I see uh, DAs Hayden, Ryan, Morrissey, Galibuas. Uh, I appreciate your presence here today. We also have joining us today our special agent in charge of the Boston FBI office, Jody Cohen. Chief Tom Fowler of the Salisbury Police Department, who's president of the Massachusetts Police Association, is with us, as well as Medford Police Chief Jack Buckley, who's president of the Mass Major City Chiefs of Police. Uh, we also have with us today our Desi Commissioner Jeff Riley and members of his team. Joining us as well are members of the state's hate crimes task force and leaders from our councils on black and Latino empowerment civil rights and community leaders from the black, Latino, Asian, Jewish, Muslim, LGBTQ, and disability communities. There are so many outstanding leaders in this room as I look out at the audience, and I would, um, I would fail if I sought to, to name everyone individually, but I would just say to you, thank you so much for the work you do day in and day out in your community and in partnership with our team. The diversity of our community is a source of strength. But it's only a strength when every person is respected for who they are. Every single person in Massachusetts deserves to live a life free from fear, discrimination, and hatred. We're here today because we're united to stop the rise of hate and hate crimes in our country and in our state. In recent years, we've seen, not just around the country, but even here in Massachusetts, attacks on black church churches with increasingly open declarations of white supremacy and organized white nationalism. Spikes in anti-immigrant and anti-Latino rhetoric that target the vulnerable and betray our nation's ideals as a beacon of hope. Cruel attacks on the members of the Asian American community, especially during COVID and beyond. A rise in homophobic and transphobic rhetoric and violence. The Jewish community has experienced a frightening surge in anti-Semitism, especially in the last month, but also for some time before that. And there's been a rise as well in Islamophobic incidents. And the FBI has warned of an elevated risk of hate crimes in the current environment. The longer term uh, trends are equally concerning, along with the growth of organized hate groups in this country. We have plenty of data from our community members, academic experts, and our own state reporting systems. Recently, the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security published the 2022 Hate Crime Report. Police departments in Massachusetts last year reported 440 hate crime incidents, which is an increase of 8.4 percent over 2021 alone. And it's the most incidents reported since 2002. So more than a 20-year high in hate crimes in Massachusetts. This increase is consistent with what members of communities have described as their experience. One hate crime is too many, and we're seeing more than one a day in Massachusetts. So it's necessary that we say firmly and forcefully, whatever the bias, whoever the target, hate has no place in Massachusetts. Anti-Semitism has no place, racism has no place, Islamophobia has no place, homophobia and transphobia have no place, ableism has no place. Crimes motivated by bigotry do terrible harm to the victim, victim, and they also do harm to communities, as we know. They threaten entire communities. They undermine the sense of security and belonging that everyone is entitled to. They're corrosive to our democracy and to our freedoms. 
For these reasons, today we're announcing a new statewide initiative to confront and deter hate crimes in Massachusetts. The Massachusetts State Police has formed the Hate Crimes Awareness and Response Team, or HART. This is a new unit dedicated full-time to tracking hate crime and hate groups and responding to and investigating incidents. They'll work with community partners and with local and federal law enforcement agencies. They'll develop training for officers, best practices for responding, and educational outreach for communities. The HART team is part of a comprehensive approach to stopping hate crimes and safeguarding those at risk for attack. As part of that strategy, today we're also announcing more resources for our schools to prevent hate crimes and reduce the bias that can lead to them. The Executive Office of Education is issuing a new round of awards today, which you will hear more about. We know that education is an antidote to the hateful ideologies that have been spreading in our culture, and we are proud to support this work. I'll now invite Colonel Jack Mon of the Massachusetts State Police to say more about our new public safety initiative. Colonel Mon. Thank you, Governor Healy. It's an honor to join all of you this morning. I want to thank Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll for their steady leadership and continued support of public safety. I'd also like to thank Secretary Reedy and Undersecretary Kwan and the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security team for their continued partnership and collaboration in our shared commitment to strengthening public safety across Massachusetts. Recent events at home and abroad provide a tragic and urgent reminder that no community is immune from the unpredictable and devastating impact of bias-motivated events. The Executive Office of Public Safety and Security recently published the 2022 Hate Crime Report for Massachusetts, which, as the Governor mentioned, recorded 440 reports of hate crime incidents statewide. That's up from 406 in 2021, and it is the highest reported since 2002. As our nation continues to grapple with a concerning increase in unlawful acts of hate, the State Police will meet this moment with a robust strategy and sustained commitment to confronting bias and intolerance by strengthening law enforcement partnerships, enhancing community engagement, and delivering advanced training and education to stakeholders to help achieve our shared goal of ensuring that hate has no place in our communities the Massachusetts State Police is pleased to announce the launch of the Hate Crimes Awareness and Response Team, or HART, spelled H-A-R-T, a new unit dedicated to enhancing partnerships across all government levels and liaising with community leaders to strengthen the statewide response to hate crimes and hate-based incidents. As part of the new unit's mandate, the HART team will enhance statewide data collection and information sharing to identify statewide, national, and global patterns and trends. It will increase stakeholder collaboration and educational outreach. It will develop advanced training and coordination with the Municipal Police Training Committee to equip law enforcement with best practices for hate crime response, and it will streamline coordination between federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies. HART will be comprised of four to five sworn members of the MSP, each serving as a primary point of contact for local law enforcement, community, and religious groups in a specific geographic area. The HART team is a diverse and multilingual group of troopers who have demonstrated exceptional investigative experience and skill. Their work will continue to build upon the many proactive initiatives and strong partnerships in Massachusetts where our level of public safety coordination is unprecedented. The, new, uh, the MSP's new heart unit will strengthen those connections and enhance our resolve to confront and, and deter unlawful acts of hate while ensuring the Commonwealth's ability to celebrate our diversity and uphold our values. The heart unit will work in close coordination with our Fusion Center. Next month, the Fusion Center will host its fifth annual Faith-Based Organization Safety and Security Seminar. The seminar convenes over 300 stakeholders to discuss security issues critical to faith-based organizations, including grant opportunities to, find safety to fund safety initiatives, threat reporting, and an overview of hate groups. 
The seminar is an excellent example of the ongoing collaborative efforts to support the implementation of safety plans, share best practices, strengthen networking, foster trust and partnerships, and ensure that faith-based organizations know the tools and resources available to protect and secure houses of worship. We are grateful to our many federal, state, and community partners who have been instrumental in the success of that effort, and we look forward to our continued work. I want to specifically recognize FBI Special Agent in Charge, Jody Cohen, for the solid partnership and uh, support of this unit. Thank you very much, Jody. In closing, despite these challenging times, I'm confident that Massachusetts will continue to lead by example, creating safe, inclusive, and protected environments, regardless of one's background or belief. Together, we will stand united against the rise in bias-motivated threats, harassment, and violence to create a safer and more inclusive Massachusetts for all its residents. We can meet today's challenges while planning for tomorrow's possibilities. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Colonel, and again, thank you to MSP for your foresight and engagement in establishing this new and important unit. I'd now like to bring to the podium our Attorney General, who's been a fantastic partner on so many fronts, and certainly when it comes to addressing, eradicating, confronting hate and violence in our communities, uh, Attorney General Andrea Campbell. Thank you. I apologize in advance. I'm carrying around a cold. I blame it on my kids. <laughs> I know some of you also have colds. Um, good morning, everyone. First of all, thank you all for being here. It's great to see the turnout, um, but also the partnership. Um, we can't do this work without each and every one of you, so thank you. And of course, I want to thank the governor and lieutenant governor for your leadership, for your partnership. I'm grateful to be here with all of you as we collectively work to address hate, white supremacy, and discrimination. From the senseless acts of gun violence across this country to the rise in white supremacy, racism, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, transphobia, xenophobia, and every, every other ism you can think about, I recognize that this is a very difficult time and a painful time for our collective mental health and well-being. And this hate and discrimination does not just exist across the country. It sadly is also here right in our progressive state of Massachusetts. Yet I'm extremely proud that we're all here to say together that hate, intolerance, discrimination should not and will not be tolerated here in Massachusetts, and that we are collectively committed to creating a commonwealth and a world that values the humanity of everybody. The New Hate Crimes Task Force, or New Hate Crimes Awareness and Response Team, I should say, will bring a holistic approach to addressing these issues, working with federal, state, and local partners, including my office, to ensure our communities have the resources and the statewide support to respond to any incident of hate. And I, along with my team, look forward to working closely with each and every one of them. Our office, including our Civil Rights Division, our Children's Justice Unit, and our Criminal Bureau are hard at work every single day, ensuring that our residents are kept safe from hate, harassment, discrimination, bullying, and so much more. Our office has been, I know, a resource for many of you in this room for decades in some instances, fighting for civil rights to be protected, whether that's in the workplace, the classroom, the housing or financial sector, or anywhere else. We encourage folks that have experienced any act of hate to contact our office, to file a complaint. You can do it easily through our website, mass.gov AGO. And when we say we encourage, we need all of you to spread that word. It's very difficult to be helpful if folks don't come forward to file a complaint. And if they don't feel as though they can, this is where all of your organizations are critical. You can reach out on their behalf, and we want to be as helpful as we can. And as we work on these issues, we will continue to address hate and bullying in our schools through the significant training that we already do with so many school administrators across the Commonwealth. We will also work to hold companies like Meta, social media companies, accountable for what they do to enable hate to show up on their platforms, which are having a detrimental effect on our kids. We will work with our college and university presidents as they are grappling with an unprecedented uptick in incidents on their campuses to be as helpful as we can. We will work to protect our public spaces from hate crimes and discrimination, and so much more. The short of it is our office will fight for each and every one of you. And we will do it in partnership with everyone on this stage and everyone in the audience and, of course, the public. 
And I'm really proud that the, my appointee, and Jen, you can wave your hand. She's the head of my crim bureau. She, they hate when I do this, but I do it anyway. Um, she works really hard. I don't do this work by myself, but she's the chief of my crim bureau. She's also my appointee to the Hate Crimes Task Force, which does critical work in terms of awareness, prevention, investigation of hate crimes, even before this new unit, and I know they'll continue to work in partnership. So thank you, Jen, and the entire crim bureau for your leadership. It's not enough for one person, office, or organization, or entity to take on these issues. We must put aside our differences, which at moments I know can be very difficult, particularly in the climate, in the international climate we are in. But we have an opportunity to model what leadership looks like and what collaboration looks like and what it means to have sometimes difficult and uncomfortable conversations to make sure that everyone who lives in Massachusetts and chooses this incredible commonwealth to call home, that they are free to live happy and most importantly, to be valued for their humanity. Thank you again to the governor for your incredible leadership, to Lieutenant Governor as well, and all of you. And it's my honor and privilege to turn it over to Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Attorney General Campbell, and thank you, Governor. It's, uh, it's certainly a privilege to be here to advance not only our Massachusetts values, but to make sure we're doing all that we can to protect our neighbors from hate, and that's all of our neighbors. These are core values in our administration, so this is very much an all-of-government work. We believe strong partnerships are the key to creating the conditions for safe and welcoming communities in our state. Secretary of Education Pat Tutwiler could not be here today, but he's deeply engaged in this work, and we're certainly grateful to have our DESE Commissioner here. That's why, in addition to this new task force, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education is awarding hate crimes prevention grants to 10 K-12 school districts across the state, as the governor previously mentioned. This is part of our deep commitment of fostering safe and inclusive learning environments for all students and educators. These grants total nearly half a million dollars that will allow secondary schools to do the deep work of responding as communities to incidents of bias and hate that they have experienced. I want to recognize some of the representatives of the school districts joining us today. We know several uh, were invited. They include Burlington, Medway, Gateway, Granby, Lenox, Gloucester, Framingham, North Reading, Bedford, and Newton. Uh, I, I certainly want to make sure we're aware that each district has proposed projects that are root, rooted in community partnerships and based on recommendations from the Governor's Task Force on Hate Crimes and the School Hate Crimes Resource Guide, two existing toolkits that work to help address issues in schools. These efforts will include collaboration with local partners, including human rights organizations that have ongoing relationships and expertise in promoting the type of equity and understanding we know we need in our schools. When a school community is impacted by bias or hate, it affects a wide range of students and staff at schools. We need to come together to ensure that this educational setting and awareness to help build school communities that not only heal, but also actively promote equity, help build positive school climates, and prevent future incidents of bias. That's why these grants prioritize schools partnering with local community organizations and law enforcement. There has to be a unity of purpose, authentic relationships with the impacted groups, and proactive partnerships on the ground to make the type of lasting change we hope to. DESE is also announcing today a second opportunity to apply for the Hate Crimes Prevention Grant with another $340,000 available to local school districts. All school districts who have experienced hate crimes or incidents of bias in the last two years and have not been awarded funding in this school year are eligible to apply and applications are going to be due by Wednesday, December 20th. I want to close by echoing the governor's, re governor's recognition of the community organizations represented here today from across our state. It's not an easy time right now for so many in our commonwealth and across our country. There's a real vulnerability and it's on all of us to listen, to learn, to do as much as we possibly can to protect and support our neighbors. Glad to be in partnership with you in that work. Thank you. Thanks so much, LG. Um, I want to also recognize at this time the chairs of our hate crimes task force, Secretary Terry Reedy of the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, and Josh Kraft. And we thank you for your ongoing commitment um, on this issue. We're happy to take any questions on topic. Great. 
Can I speak to this? Sure. Right, great. Thank you. I think all of you in the room know that there's a, law, a significant law enforcement aspect of these investigations. Some things can be shared with the public, some things can't. Uh, I can tell you that the state police, working with all our partners at the state and the federal level, do have information and do respond to incidents. Hopefully we get a heads up. Sometimes that's not always the case. Sometimes you need intelligence, sometimes you need informants, sometimes you need someone just picking up the phone and giving a heads up. Those are all part of law enforcement tactics that we're going to enhance through this unit, through, through the colonel, uh, and again, continuing the work with local partners, state partners, and federal partners. It's not, uh, it's not easy sometimes getting in information from people and, and being able to react to a situation before it happens. But I think this group is going to hopefully uh, work really strongly together in Massachusetts and outside of Massachusetts to deal with those situations in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. And I do want to thank um, our SAC, our special agent in charge, Jody Cohen from the FBI, who's with us today. She's new to town, uh, just started in August, and we're delighted to have her in her role continuing on. Uh, and I want the Commonwealth to know, you should know we have very, very close working relationships between local, district, state, and federal law enforcement. And I know we are united in a purpose and also in action when it comes to investigating and holding those accountable who engage in hateful conduct, conduct and acts of violence in the Commonwealth. Governor, can you talk about yeah. how this Well, I look around the room, and again, I want to just uh, particularly acknowledge my district attorney colleagues who are in the room. I see District Attorney Marion Ryan and District Attorney uh, Mike Morrissey, among others, and District Attorney Kevin Hayden. You know, the work that is done by the district attorney's offices, by the attorney general's offices, is ongoing. That's not a change. Uh, the work that is done by the Massachusetts State Police to work in partnership with others to investigate and prosecute crimes, including hate crimes, continues. But I think what today is about is a recognition of the moment that, they, that we are in as, as, a, as a country and as a commonwealth. And it is appropriate and good that we are taking steps to enhance law enforcement's capability when it comes to intelligence gathering and investigative techniques, information sharing. Um, it will further help our ability to hold those accountable who need to be held accountable for perpetrating hate crimes. And it will also help us better get ahead of what is happening in this space, where we have seen here and around the world increased incidents of hate. So I applaud the Massachusetts State Police for taking the initiative of developing, establishing heart as an enhancement of our techniques uh, to address hate in the Commonwealth. And I also appreciate the work of our State Department of Education looking at matters on the front end, how we can better eradicate and address issues of bias, um, in particular, that uh, find themselves in our K through 12 setting. Thanks. Distinguishing that is very important, okay? There is a difference between free speech and conduct that rises to the level of a crime. And unfortunately, I think we're seeing more and more um, instances where uh, demonstrations are lending themselves to action that is simply not protected under free speech doctrine. I know that we're gonna continue to work in communication with our colleges and universities here in Massachusetts. We're proud in Massachusetts to be home to so many wonderful educational institutions. Um, and uh, it's important that we continue to provide them with, with the guidance and with the assistance that they need. But I do want to be clear, um, there is a distinction, and I know that all of us um, who work together with law, with law enforcement will make sure that we are going to hold the line when it comes to addressing that distinction. Last question. Governor, does, does anyone in your office or have your office been talked to where maybe this lies in people's hands and it becomes some what could be um, one of the problems for this? Well, I think that's a, it's a great, it's a great question and it's a question that begs a much longer answer than I am going to give you. Um, 
I will say that, you know, in my time as a civil rights chief, I was a civil rights chief for many years in the Attorney General's office and then had the privilege of serving as Attorney General and now get to work alongside Secretary Reedy and others in law enforcement and our community partners who are here. Um, you know, I, my focus right now is on addressing the now in what is and what is the most unfortunate escalation that we have seen of hate incidents and conduct in this state and around this country. And we need to be clear. We need to call it out when we see it. We need to take action when we see it. We need to hold accountable perpetrators of that conduct. And we need to find ways to heal as community. Um, unfortunately, it's also a moment where there are any number of entities looking to exploit for political gain um, some of the, the, the fault lines um, and cracks that are there. And I think it's all the more important that we hang together as a state. When you see, if you have the privilege like I do and the LG does of looking out on this room, you would see an incredible diversity in this room. You know, the strength of our law enforcement partners and our prosecutor's offices, the strength of our civil rights organizations and community groups representing all races and religions and identities. That's important, okay? It's important, and that's what today is about. It's to send a message to people in Massachusetts. We've got your back when it comes to hate crimes. We're gonna address hate crimes. We're gonna work to confront and eradicate hate, and we're gonna do so in partnership at the state, local, and federal level, working with all of you. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Great, thank you very much. Great, okay, great.